looks like it could be any highway that stretches across a part of northern Canada. Communities are far and few between. Traffic can be sparse. And if you're trying to hitch a ride, it might feel hopelessly remote. This highway is only unique because it's so notorious. Family members will not let family members get on the highway anymore. But if you don't have extended family members that can drive or even have a vehicle, they'll still get on the highway. And unfortunately, they're still young women. Renata Heathcliff is referring to the Highway of Tears. A 720 kilometer corridor that stretches across northern BC from Prince George to Prince Rupert. She used to hitchhike along it, but doesn't anymore. I can't even imagine trying to get on the highway and hitchhike, that's just not possible. Mm. It's not safe. The highway has a grim reputation. RCMP say 18 women have gone missing or have been murdered along this route since 1969. But Indigenous leaders believe the number is much higher, likely closer to 50. One of the victims, 16-year-old Ramona Wilson. Last seen by her family heading out to a party in 1994. Her body was found in a wooded area near Smithers the following year. A lot of people think that will never happen to us, but that happened to our family. And then we, we lost one of our one, one of our precious, precious jewels. And so because of that, I, I think you look at all of the the, the need for safety. Mary T.G. was Ramona's cousin. She's an executive director of Carrier Sakani Family Services, and she's one of many who have been pushing to make this highway safer for years. I think we all have known that we need a safe transportation system for so so young girls and vulnerable people aren't aren't hitchhiking. I think people that that don't live in the north, um, northern BC or in any of the northern province, really can appreciate the challenges to get to services um, because of that remoteness. Now, after 10 years of lobbying, a new ride is on the road. BC Transit recently started running two new bus routes. This one left Prince George and is destined for Burns Lake, a community 230 kilometers away. That's where Roger Joseph is headed. He learned about the new bus from a worried family member. My daughter, she said, Daddy, I don't want you hitchhiking. You're always hitchhiking and afraid you might catch a ride with the wrong person, so I want you to get on this bus. On this day, there were eight passengers taking the three-hour trip. One of them is Richard Dominic. This is his third time on board. In Burns Lake alone, I... A lot of people, a lot of my friends don't ask for rides anymore. They used to ask me to drive them out of Bern so they can hitchhike. And there are the girls and stuff, they're the ones that ask for rides so they can hitchhike. And now they, they don't have to do that, but everybody can afford five bucks. That's the cost to ride one of these bus routes. About a tenth of the price to buy a ticket on the Greyhound. It's much cheaper because the operating costs are covered by the province and communities along the route. People and community leaders and First Nation leaders have been pushing for this for a long time. Chris Beach is the mayor of Burns Lake, a village built around forestry and mining. It's a hub for the two new bus routes, the one that goes to Prince George and the other that goes further west to Smithers. Finally, we have a service where we can say, look, Here's something safe, right? For $5, you can travel all the way to Prince George or all the way to Smithers. And for another $5, you can travel all the way back. Um, so, uh, you know, I think um, the service is just a few months old, but so far the numbers look good. A lot of people are starting to use it, and we're confident in the long term uh, it's going to be uh, heavily utilized. The goal is to connect more communities along this remote highway. Right now, BC Transit buses cover a 400-kilometer stretch along the Highway of Tears. The plan is to add at least one other route in the months ahead. 
For now, the service is limited. The buses just run along part of the highway and operate on alternating days. The Galbier scheduler will come up and he'll ride the routes again and just uh, yeah, check all the timing and stuff. Chris Fudge is reviewing all of the routes and how much they're being used. He's a senior manager with BC Transit. Yes, you betcha. It will definitely take a year for the service to mature and to develop. We'll monitor it and, and make sure that uh, it is in fact doing that. It may need a bit more awareness and a bit more education in getting the word out there. There are new bus stops and shelters, and will some days 20 people may be boarding a bus. Some still don't know much about the routes. You know, this is pretty nice to have a transit system like this. Take Richard Skin. We first met him on the bus to Smithers. Then we came across him a few hours later on the highway, hitchhiking his way back to Burns Lake. This goes one way, and I have to get back on my own. He didn't realize the bus okay. went both ways, but seeing as the return trip wasn't for a few more hours, he decided to keep trying to catch a ride anyway. The fact that people are still hitchhiking frustrates Renata Heathcliff because she now uses the bus regularly. Our community members do know about it, and I, I don't understand why they're not using it enough. Um, I wish they would because, like I said, I still see our community members out on the highway hitchhiking. Then you said you see women out there. I see women out there. Which is worrying considering just how many have already gone missing or have been killed. I think Mary TG says this bus that's will that's make travel that's safer that's for everyone who lives along the highway, but it alone isn't a solution. It's a long time in coming, but it's definitely needed, but there's still a lot more work that needs to be done, and we can't lose sight of that. We're not done because we have a few shuttle buses. It's a drop in the bucket, but at least it's a start. Later this month, the inquiry for missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls will be holding hearings in Smithers. The years of violence and victims will be front and center along with the drive to better protect those at risk along the road ahead. Briar Stewart, CBC News, along the Highway of Tears in BC.